with aromatherapy and changing your cool. I want to start off with this beautiful quote, and I thought I'd go straight to the author's name. This was written in in period between 1850 and 1894 by Robert Louis Stevenson. And it is such a beautiful quote. It is almost Robert Louis Stevenson understood that connection that people have, that humankind has with nature. He understood that connection that people have with trees. And he uses a very interesting term, the subtle something that comes from the trees. It even refers to the quality of the air. He's maybe even been talking about the essential oils that are emitted from these old trees. But he talks about the claim that they make on our heart because when we connect with nature, we are connecting with all the plants and all the elements in nature. And how does it make you feel? It is so wonderful, he says, and it renews a weary spirit. This is indeed what the practice of Shinrin Yoku is all about. This is indeed what happens when we use essential oils in our home or in our office on a regular basis. It is they change something in the air. Such a beautiful quote. I love it. Now. Not surprising. I do have to before I proceed. This is where I should have been a week ago, about a week ago. This is, but thank you, Kyo, Kyo san, and to all the team at Perfect Potion in Japan for being able to take a lot of the photos and to help me record a lot of the interviews that we did. But here, Kyo is enjoying listening to a seven hundred year old sugi tree in the prefecture which we visited um, in in the Wakayama prefecture. This is a 700 year old tree. Just think about what it is telling Kyo. Just think about how Kyo would have felt being so close up to some this gorgeous, beautiful sugi tree. And by the way, the essential oils that I will be showing you tonight and talking to you about do not come from 700 year old trees. They come all from plantation trees and actually from the off cuts often from those trees which are harvested as part of a forest thinning project and so on. And I did ask um, many, there's going to be several really cool interviews. One interview is with Higashi-san, our, the distiller of the beautiful essential or Japanese essential oils. And the other interview is with the forest ranger. I'll call them forest rangers. That's the term we use in Australia. Um, that actually are the caretakers of the forest that manage the forest, the forest. And they share with us some beautiful insights into how these trees are being managed. But a lot of these trees, this tree, I believe, is close to a temple. It's not surprising that they would have built many of the Shinto shrines close to these trees because with the, within the Shinto religion, there is a very strong connection with nature. Now, this is some more images of that beautiful 700-year-old sugi tree, how majestic it is, how it towers up into the sky, into the heavens. Now, as I said, and, and if you listen to some of those interviews um, that, that will be posted separately, you um, and this is a te the temples are actually many of the, the forests around the temples are often owned by the actual temple themselves. They, they have the responsibility to manage these forests. Interesting concept. Wonder how that would work in other parts of the world. And by the way, thank you so much. I think by the time. Um, I'm assuming that most everybody watching is here from Australia and hopefully New Zealand. But today we have more than more than 500 people from 54 countries around the world. So I do hope wherever you are in the world that you are able to find the time to connect with nature through essential oils and through the through the whole, through the uh, um, idea of shining your cool forest bathing. 
But this is one of the 117 temples in Mount Koyasan, a very important sacred area. And at many of the temples, you're able to stay. And I had, I was supposed to spend the night in one of these beautiful temples. Um, in, very close, as you can see, the forest is just behind the temple. Now, this is a little video. I hope it will work out. As you can see, much of the temple is actually made out of timber. This timber is from the forest. Okay, so there is a very special relationship in, 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 in this connection between the forest and the temples and the, temp and the temples actually are very sacred in that respect because they honor the gifts from the forest. Now I'm here tonight to talk more about that connection with aromatherapy and Hunan Noku. Now, I hope you have a copy of volume three, The Psyche and the Subtle. This was a book that I launched last year. I think in it, I proposed a very interesting concept, a very interesting model that in which I look at various pathways in which scent plays in which um, the, the, the role of aromatherapy more and the importance of set in eliciting a, more, a spiritual experience. Now I've identified six of those pathways, but tonight I'm here to talk about one of those pathways. And in the book, I refer to the idea of biophilia. And that is that connection, that innate connection that humankind has always had with nature. Well, until recently, I'm assuming. Now people, are often drawn to aromatherapy. And when I ask them why they're drawn to aromatherapy, it often turns out that it is the scent of these essential oils that helps to reconnect this connection that we have had with nature.
important for many reasons. Now, we often talk about, and this is very interesting because I've read several, you know, several um, author's interpretation of forest bathing, and I was very tempted to call it like a mindfulness experience in the forest. And for some of us, it might be that. But a lot of the times when I'm walking through a forest, I get excited by everything that I see. So there's a sense of elation. There's a sense of awe. This is not necessarily a state of mindfulness. For some of us, it might be mindfulness. And mind you, all is a trigger and elicits many therapeutic outcomes as well. Sometimes when we spend in nature, we can simply forget about the everyday busyness of life and just focus on the now, focus on what is around us, focus on the moment. And when we are spending that time in nature, when we are spending that time in the forest, time seems to take on very little meaning. Um, and of course, you don't get just a sense of union connection with nature. It's almost like there is this sense of union connection with the universe itself by simply spending time in nature. It makes us realize how small we are in the big picture of things. You know, many cultures have always had this unique and wonderful relationship with nature. Um, and of course, in Japanese, the term that we, one term, there's many terms that are most likely used to talk about this connection, this bond we have with nature. But there's one particular term, shinrin-yoku which is often referred to as forest bathing, or I like the uh, this other description, taking in the forest atmosphere. So shimmering your cool means as if I'm going to take a bath in the forest atmosphere. But when I'm taking this bath in the forest atmosphere, I'm engaging all of the senses. And this is interesting, and this becomes a connection with scent. And of course, what researchers have wanted to do is, well, hold on, why does spending time in nature, spending time in the forest, have such a beneficial effect on our well-being? So what people, have, what researchers have done is, well, let's create those conditions of nature in a laboratory. And we'll look at some of those studies very, very soon. And mind you, some rules. There needs to be some rules. It doesn't mean, oh, let's go for a hike or let's go for a jog in the forest, okay? It doesn't mean, oh, let's bring our camera and phone, leave all your doodads behind and just enjoy the forest. Just connect with it, with all of your senses. That's what it really means. So it's not a physical challenge or a physical activity. So choose a path choose somewhere which is going to match your fitness level so it's not going to be too challenging where that becomes the actual purpose of the activity now i have always ever since i well discovered japan ever since i had been spending time in japan i have been in awe of matsubashi's haikus this one is perfect when it comes to appreciating the forest. And I am sure Matsubasho was an aromatherapist. And he was one that didn't care what the botanical names of the plants were. Not knowing the name of the tree, I stood in the flood of its sweet scent. He acknowledges here that this sweet aroma of the tree has some profound effect on his well-being. Now, mind you, the term shinrin yoku, well, you would think of it as being an old term, maybe going back way, you know, several hundred years, 500 years to the period of Matsubashu. No, it was a term that was only coined in 1982, and it was coined by the director of the Japanese Forestry Agency, and he just simply wanted to get people living in the cities in Japan to enjoy the forest. 
they felt that people needed to get out of the city and enjoy the countryside, enjoy the forest, because they knew that it had many health benefits. So the term is relatively new. You might have remembered that I was also going to tell you, I was so excited about going to Japan and I was going to share with you all these beautiful Japanese words. Well, I'm still going to save that for my next for my next attempt to visit Japan very soon. And by the way, if you want to read, I think I posted a uh, uh, an email, I posted the reason why I didn't actually, I made it to Japan, but I could only spend 24 hours there. But let me share with you one new Japanese word. And this picture here beautifully epitomizes komorebi, komorebi. Now there is no English word to describe the sun dappling, shining through the trees. Um, and leaving this beautiful effect of shadow and light. Komorobi is the light as it shines through the trees and the beautiful patterns that it leaves. What a beautiful word um, and this image. When you, when you do your forest bathing experience, more than likely you will ex also see this Komorobi experience. Now, as I said, the word was uh, Shinrin Yoku was a marketing exercise was used purely to get people out of the cities and spend more time in the forest. Now, as a result of doing this, research found that there were many physiological and psychological benefits when we expose ourselves to the elements of the forest. And by the way, some of those studies have found that as little as 30 minutes a week is all that you need to get some benefits. So if you say, I can't do, if you are not in, in that a position where you live next to the forest where you can do it every day, it, it, on the weekends, if you can find somewhere close and spend 30 minutes, is you will get many of these benefits. So some of the benefit, and it's a compounding effect too. So the more often you practice it, the better the benefits are. So some of the benefits, by the way, by the way, include increased immunity by increasing the number of natural killer cells. Um, and as a result, also enhancing the activity of anti-cancer proteins, significantly decreasing levels of stress hormones, improving sleep, decreasing anxiety, aggression, fatigue, mental confusion, promoting a positive mood, having an effect on lowering blood pressure, suppressing the sympathetic nervous system activity and increasing the parasympathetic nervous system. These are some of the benefits that have been reported and measured as a result of forest bathing, both in the forest and within a laboratory situation. So it's surprising now. What started out as a very small activity now has gained such global attention and so much research is now being done not just in Japan, in Korea, in Taiwan, in Europe, in North America, and even in Australia. So um, some of the bits, some of the practice, you know, some of the benefits of forest bathing have now been reported by researchers all around the world. This is one of the first books that came out, and Lee was one of the early researchers. I think this book is from 2018, something like that. But he had actually, it's, and it's beautifully written, even though his background is as an academic and he actually had done some of the early research exploring some of the benefits. Um, so this is now one of the many books. When you look now online, you'll see so many different books on forest bathing and shinrin yoku. But what I wanted to particularly point to, and this is now we're going to talk about essential oils, is the attributes the therapeutic benefits of the forest to the phyto phytocides. And the phytocides can best be described as the olfactory related elements of the forest. And of course, the forests generally are quite rich in phytocides. And guess what the phytocides are? 
they are the essential oils that can be found in the leaves and the woods of all the forest trees and all the forest plants. Exactly, they are the essential oils. Now there's more than one pathway. So it's the phytocides is one. There is also another very important element and that is the visual element as well. They found that um, showing, for example, showing images of forests and peaceful countrysides and pe of nature also elicited many of the benefits that one experiences within the forest. And why did they rule out exercise, for example, because some of the critics said, yeah, but maybe you get those benefits when you're you know, spending time doing physical activity in the forest. Will they rule that out? Because one study actually looked at individuals of similar age, similar health, and they measured all their health parameters. And one was walking in an urban landscape and one was walking in the forest. And only the person walking in the forest had many of those positive attributes, which you would associate with the practice of forest bathing. Whereas the person with the same level of physical activity did not experience that walking within a densely populated urban landscape. Interesting. Now here, we start to look at, well, what are some of these phytocides that have been identified? Now we're talking very simple essential oil constituents. Alpha pinene, beta myrcene, D limonene, um, gamma murine. These are simple components found in many of the forest trees, such as Crypto Cryptomeria japonica, which is a Japanese cedar. But doesn't take an Einstein to work out. Well, these oil, these constituents can also be found in many other essential oils. Um, they can be found in citrus oils, many of the oils from the melaleucas, the tea trees, many of the oils from the eucalypts, and so on, all contain these components. So it is likely that this is a really, the practice of forest bathing is a really good way to support and validate the benefits of aromatherapy purely through the olfactory pathway. Now, here they are looking at the neuropharmacological activity. And of course, this study was done on mice, but they actually found out that it improved um, sleeping patterns in mice. Another, other, but other studies on humans have found, and, 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 and studies on mice found that it also reduced anxiety and had a relaxing effect. So it's not surprising, and this study was early. Since this study was done in 2009, many other studies have now been done to confirm it, and many of the studies are now being done on humans. Okay, and of course, as I mentioned before, the components, the phytocides that were found to help increase and boost immune activity and significantly increase um, the natural killer cell activities were compounds like alpha pinene, 1,8-cineol, also found in eucalyptus, and D-limonene. Now, what Lee wanted to do in one of his studies was, okay, we should actually measure the forest there. So they actually took a sample of the forest there, and they did an analysis of that forest there. And so the measurement here is reported as nanograms per cubic meter. So these were the compounds that they found by measuring the forest, what, what was in the forest there. So these would be very small, very, you know, trace components, very nano, we're talking nanograms. But some of the key ones that I've identified in red because they can be found in we'll see on the next slide there in the essential oils were alpha pinene, canthene, beta pinene, myrcene, lemonine, borneal acetate, and so on. So this is very interesting. Now, it is also very important. And Lee here, of course, reported the temperature and the humidity. And the temperature was a very pleasant 16 degrees Celsius. So it's actually quite cool, but a very high humidity. 
which tends to be very conducive to um, having that humidity in the air tends to be more conducive for higher levels of phytocytes in the air. Perhaps warmer temperature would have also helped because the heat would have helped with the volatility of the phytocytes, the essential oil constituents being released from the trees. Now, this is probably the typical forest. This is a photo that Kiyosans just sent me recently last week when she was um, visiting the um, um, Higashi-san and they went to the forest to see where the um, Hinoki and Sugi trees grow. But this would have been the typical forest for practicing Shinrin-yoku in Japan. Now, here I have the chemical composition of I'm using now Hinoki leaf oil and Hinoki wood as an example. And now you can see in highlighted in red are those same chemical constituents which were found in the forest air. Now remember, there's all these other plant species as well, which would also be contributing to that richness of the forest air. But looking at these two essential oils, so when you diffuse these essential oils or when you smell these essential oils in your home, are you likely to get some of the benefits of forest bathing? Lee believes, yes, you are likely to get some of the benefits. Now, I'm not just encouraging you to forget walking in the forest. Let's just sniff essential oils. Not at all. Please. There will be times, of course, where you can't make it to the forest and whether it's in the office or at home, you will get so many health benefits by diffusing these essential oils. Now, DHEA, a very important hormone, it helps to produce testosterone and estrogen. It provides cardioprotective and anti-obesity and anti-diabetic properties. It is found to be higher. And as we get older, by the way, DHEA starts to drop, but spending time in the forest, forest bathing, DHEA levels were higher after walks in the forest, but not in an urban environment. So, and report, and, and also the studies noted that walking in the forest, but not walking in urban areas, reduce the inflammatory cytokines. How exciting is that? Now, let's have a look at some of the um, advice that we should follow when practicing forest bathing. First one is finding the right location, somewhere close by that you can. Um, not, we're not all lucky enough to live next to some beautiful temple and mountain, but find a, find a, a location that you can enjoy. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you will find that right location where you can just find time to connect with nature. Make sure that you feel comfortable. Make sure it is somewhere that fills your heart with joy that you are happy to be. And I know that it's tough, but keep this at home. Now, for the purposes of what we did, we had to take our phones and cameras with us so that we could share the experience. But if you can, please leave it behind. I know that there's a temptation. Oh my God, I'm going to miss out on this beautiful scene. I need to take a photo of it. It's going to only distract you from gaining the full health benefits of the practice of shimmering your food. What does that mean? And I think it would, it would be almost hypocritical for you to be inhaling all these essential oils while having all these devices going next to you. So once again, even when you're practicing immersing yourself into a forest bathing experience in your own home, once again, that's really good advice. Keep those devices away so that they don't distract you. They are the keys to unlocking the healing benefits of nature and of the forest. And make sure you allow nature to enter through your ears. I don't know if you could hear in that in that video the bird, the bird, you know, the, there were bird sounds. There's all very there are so much activity going on in the forest. The rustling of the leaves. Um, and you will hear it all, see it all, smell the smells, the smells emanating from the earth 
and from all the leaves that are composting on the forest floor. The, the mouth. Now, the mouth is a very cautious one. Um, so I'm just worried about what you might try to taste, especially if you're not too sure of what the plant is. So be very wary there. But texture, I love to feel the texture of the bark, of things that have fallen on the ground, touching the moss on the tree, on the trees. And this is just another bit of personal advice. Now, I always feel more comfortable walking in what I call like um, not barefoot, um, but yet minimalist shoes where I, I can actually feel the ground with my feet. So there's no heel or no. So, but it, once again, it depends on your physical state. Um, making sure that you do wear shoes that are going to be comfortable for you to walk in. I find that I feel with my feet, I can feel so much more if I'm wearing these minimalist shoes. And of course, when you get to a little forest stream or something like that, what do I do? Take my shoes off and take a little walk in there so that then you can really experience it. So this is just some very simple advice on how to get the most out of a real forest bathing experience. And as I think, listen to and this, in, this picture, by the way, is a Hinoki plantation forest in Japan in that same region. So listening to the birds singing, hearing the rustling of the leaves um, as the breeze but as 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 the breeze blows through, um, looking at the different shades of green leaves and the sunlight, the komoda bee filtering through the branches, smelling the fragrance of this earth, smelling the fragrance of the phytocytes that are being released from the trees, just feeling the freshness and the cleanness of the air, taking in deep breaths. And of course, feeling the trunk of the tree, dipping your toes and hands into the stream and even lying down on the forest floor. Of course, the phytocytes are highest in summer and often lowest in winter. But in Australian hot summer, it might be too hot because another important component is for there to be some humidity in the air, which is going to probably trap the phytocytes. So the richer, the denser the forest canopy, the higher the concentration of the, of the phytocytes. And of course, as, as I've said, when the air is moist after rain or during fog, there will be a higher percentage of phytocytes in the forest there. And I'll finish off with some beautiful, beautiful images of my little Shinrin Yoku cool um, experience in Minjiraba, otherwise known as Stradbroke Island. Now, Lee suggests that when we do not find the time to go to the forest, maybe we should bring the scent of the forest outdoors, indoors by diffusing essential oils. Now, if you want to get the extra, the, the visual component was also in most of the studies found to be very important, as was the tactile aspect as well. So the visual component means maybe having some plants in the office or having some plants in your, having some, having some, you know, plants around the room. Or what about having, if you're working on a computer, make sure your screensaver is off. It's a nice nature scene because just people looking at nature scenes on computers also elicited similar physiological benefits. Now, most of the essential oils that are rich in all these very simple, often monotoping hydrocarbon compounds are most of your conifer oils, the fir, heba, hinoki, kusanokis, uh, which, um, spruce, sugi, and pine. So spruce and pine and fir, a lot of the conifers that grow throughout Europe and grow throughout North America would also be very conducive to shingling your cool experiences. And I would suggest that, of course, our Australian eucalypt forests would also be conducive to experiencing the benefits of shingling your cool. Because the, as I say, say here, the researchers have found that just inhaling these oils can provide many of the benefits of experience of actually doing forest bathing. How can I enjoy this? 
in aromatherapy? Well, the most practical way is, of course, to diffuse the essential oils. You could make up a little aroma mist if you wanted to. So where you just spray something um, where it's been solubilized in like um, in a, a water solubilizer. Uh, you could use them to make up a massage oil, or of course you could use them in a bath. But the exciting thing is all the studies that have been done involve inhalation. So this is the actual physiological and the pharmacological outcomes just through inhaling these compounds is quite profound. Now, when you talk about these four essential oils in particular that Higashi-san has made for us, and they come from two very important, very sacred trees to Japan that play a very important part in all aspects of Japanese culture and Japanese life, and that is Hinoki and Sugi. Now, you know what? I, I love it when somebody is meticulous enough and detailed enough to make sure that wood and barks are separated from the leaf. So we've produced here some gorgeous, Higashi-san has produced some gorgeous essential oils, one from the leaf and one from the wood of both these two precious trees. So I just want to discuss these two, um, these four essential oils. Um, one, and the first oil that I want to look at is hinoki. So the first one we'll look at is hinoki leaf. I'm going to smell it as we do this. I just love hinoki leaf. It has such a totally different to pine or spruce or fir, but it has a very fresh, a delicate, camphoraceous, very pine like aroma with this really beautiful undertone of a, a nice green note. So it just smells like crushing the fresh hinoki leaves in your hand one that in Japan people would be very familiar with. The wood, on the other hand, it is quite, I love, it's delicate. And look, I won't take, you have to listen to the video. I asked Higashi-san, the distiller of the oils, how the oils make him feel. And he gave such a wonderful response. So I'm just, and he spoke about the different more subtle qualities between the hinoki and the sugi. It's a quite, hinoki, it's quite a dry, it's a very fine, delicate, woody note. Uh, and there's a bit of a hint of warmth and almost a slightly spicy undertone to it. It's got a really pleasant tenacity to it. And it's a really nice substitute. There's not many wood oils that we have the choice to use as aromatherapists. And wood oils are often considered to be the least sustainable. And I hope you had a chance to listen to my presentation on essential oil sustainability last time. It's still available if you're interested in that sandalwood presentation. But um, a lot, and at the same thing for at the cedar wood or some of the other cedar woods. So it's really nice that we have some uh, different woody notes to use within aromatherapy. It's a gorgeous, um, gorgeous essential oil to use in aromatherapy, which um, imparts a really wonderful, delicate, woody base note to a blend. Some of the uses of the hinoki very calming and relaxing. I find that the wood oil more promotes this sense of a spiritual awareness. I really find that the wood oil very deeply grounding, but at the same time uplifting. In Japan, the oils, these oils are often just simply used as an air purifier. They have some excellent ins natural insect repellent abilities as well. But I find the leaf oil quite mentally and emotionally uplifting and invigorating. Perhaps when we're feeling run down and overwhelmed with strength, we will find it has a very balancing effect in helping to calm us, but at the same time, leaving us feeling more invigorating. And of course, the benefit of some of the conifer oils, and certainly the case with both hinoki wood and leaf oil, is that they're very good in helping to alleviate respiratory congestion 
associated with black blocks, sinuses, and chest congestion. Now I give it, I've given now there's a detailed monograph that you'll be a so there's a very detailed blog and essential oil monograph that I've put together. So you'll find this in when you'll send the email or it's posted on my website that you can access all this information that I am presenting with. So I'm not going to go through here how to blend the Hinoki wood or the Hinoki leaf, but um, the wood oils I like to use with other wood oils and resin oils. Um, it would, it's so nice in a more relaxing grounding blend, whereas Hinoki leaf, I tend to use, I would use with more herbaceous leafy essential oils to create something perhaps a little bit more uplifting and a little bit more invigorating. Now the sugi wood and the sugi leaf. Now some of you might recall, and the blog and the monograph is still on my website, yakusugi. Yakusugi, yaku means a thousand years old. Yakusugi comes from wood that is a thousand years old. Uh, now, before you get too alarmed, please read that blog. It, no tree was damaged or hurt in the process of making yakusugi. It came from trees that um, wood that had naturally fallen down. Yakusugi comes from a very isolated remote region in Japan, Yakushima. And um, and it's very difficult and it's very precious to get access to some of the wood. Higashi-san, um, I think he speaks about the excitement of when he was able, um, through a friend and colleague of his, able to access a small amount of Yakusugi wood. And he had distilled a very small amount of this oil and he was so generous to share it with me. But the Sugi wood, I would prefer to as something that is perhaps not too sure of the age of the wood, but it is nowhere near a thousand years old, the Sugi wood. Um, and once again, it is from plantation wood and often, and what um, Higashi-san will explain is it's from the offcuts from the building industry, from the, tim from the from, from timber. But the Sugi, I find it more delicate than the Hinoki. It's a very soft, delicate wood and note, a very sweet, or almost resiny, woody undertone. Little bit more delicate, softer than Yakusugi. Yakusugi has much more depth to it, but the Sugi wood um, is amazing. It's beautiful. Nothing, I have not, not smell any wood oil like this. Now the Sugi leaf, it's a really, it's a really fresh, light pine aroma. It's quite a light scent, but very fresh. It's gorgeous and very, very delightful. So this is just from the leaf from the sugi tree. Now the composition of the sugi leaf, this is the chemical composition that we've done from the essential oil that is in this kit, is quite complex. Uh, and, and it's quite, it has Everything from limonene to linalool to alpha-pinene and camphene, very, com very complex components. But one that caught my eye was terpenene or oil, which is not found in many essential oils, but it's also found, for example, in tea tree essential oil. Um, and you will see there also towards the end, it's, there's, there is also a small level of terpene compounds and of Force, very important esters which give those conifer leaf oils a very pleasant, uplifting, and that almost that effect, that, that uplifting, refreshing aroma is a very balancing effect on our nervous system as well. So there is that nice combination of sesquiterpenes, ter terpenes, esters, monoterpene hydrocarbons and monoterpene alcohols in all in this beautiful, beautiful sugi leaf oil. The sugi wood oil is even more interesting. It's got a, very, a small percentage of monoterpene hydrocarbons, but it's very rich and dense in all these interesting sesquiterpene compounds, which would have some very interesting components and features to the essential oil. It's a very subtle 
smelling oil, both the sooty wood and the sooty leaf. I, I, I would like, I think while the hinoki is quite relaxing, I think the sooty wood is more for a more meditative, mindfulness state, very calming, very inducive to creating spiritual awareness. Of course, like, so, like the hinoki wood, it is also used in Japan to, as an air purifier. It's very, the leaf oil is very refreshing and uplifting. Now, even in Japan, to find where you can get like the wood oil separate from the leaf oil, people often just refer to it as sugi oil or hinoki oil without making any differentiation because often what is distilled is just everything. In this case here, the leaves have been separated from the wood. Now, and once again, a little bit more delicate, but the sugi leaf and the sugi wood, wood could also be used in a blend for alleviating respiratory congestion. And once again, the blending with the wood oil and the leaf oil, I've given you some ideas. Please go to my essential oil monograph to get some really interesting blends. The wood oil, for example, blends so nicely with other woody oils like cedar wood, like um, Santalum album or Santalum spicatum, um, sugi wood and hinoki wood blend or heber wood would blend so well. Ends beautifully with the fresh citrus oils as well. Now I've just created a couple of little recipes here for those who want some ideas for blending with these beautiful essential oils. And I've chosen very much themes which are in line with forest bathing or that remind us of Japan. Now I am sure that if you've been to Japan, if you've been to a traditional Japanese sauna, spa or a Japanese bath, they're often made out of hinoki wood. And so I just felt that combination of hinoki leaf with the hinoki wood and a drop of lavender would be just a perfect blend to recreate that Japanese bath. So you could try that at home. Now, for any mindfulness experience now, and as I said, for some of us, walking, forest walking, forest bathing might be a mindfulness experience, but that shouldn't be the ultimate goal because I often get more excited um, spending the time in the forest. But I felt a beautiful mindfulness blend to help to promote state of mindfulness had to have both the sugi wood and the hinoki wood with a few drops of frankincense. Try that, it's gorgeous. Um, I love the term forest wisdom and just connecting with the wisdom of the forest. Here, I wanted to just use all the Jap all four Japanese oils, but I've just chosen sugi wood, hinoki wood and sugi leaf. But of course, if you want to add a dash of sugi leaf, it will be that combination of wood and leaf together will be magical. If you want to have that more of a grounding effect, I've chosen the two sugi wood and hinoki wood, but I've added a little bit of vanilla. If you prefer something a little bit sweeter, add some patchouli. It would create a similar effect. On the other hand, if you wanted something more um, to more to alleviate sinuses, blocks clear your sinuses, just add some eucalyptus and peppermint together with the hinoki leaf, beautiful combination. Or if you want to feel energized and uplifted, the sugi leaf and hinoki leaf together with just a dash of lemon will probably do the trick. Just some little ideas for blending. Now I wanted to finish off by just showing you some of the photos that Hyosan took for me while I couldn't be in Japan. These trees are approximately 100 years old and this is a Hinoki plantation. So while Hinoki in the wild is a protected species now in Japan, there is no shortage of Hinoki. And in actual fact, I remember last time I was there, Higashi-san was saying the problem is that everybody wants building the modern homes, they don't use wood anymore. They're using a lot of modern building materials. So it's good for the forest because it, it's, protecting, it's protecting the forest. So there has been less demand for the forest. To allow a tree to get to 700 years old, the park rangers 
and the forest rangers have to practice you know, some forest thinning to allow the trees to get bigger as they get older. But it's just a majestic forest, isn't it, of these Hinoki trees. Now, on the left, this is an old photo that I took. This is a tree on a path to one of the temples in the mountain, and it's wrapped around, it's got a little, um, the rope wrapped around it means that uh, spirit lives in this tree. And so this tree will never, I jokingly said, never become Hinoki wood oil. And this, by the way, is that another image of a forest in the Wakayama prefecture. So this is some of the wood, and you'll see in the video that I've got where I interview, thanks to Kiyo-san and the Perfect Potion team, where we interview Higashi-san. This is some of the wood, and the wood has to be pulverized before it can be, um, before the oil can be distracted, um, extracted from the wood. And this is some photos and images of the very small distillation plant that he has, which he said his father helped him build, who had like the engineering know-how, and um, they specialize in just making um, uh, a range of Japanese oils from plants that grow close by, um, and focusing on those plants that grow close by. He does make other essential oils as well, but the ones that um, he primarily focuses on are the sugi and hinoki. Now, I went to Japan and I was supposed to be experiencing all of this, just I should be there now talking to you about Shinri Nyoku. I never made it. I spent 24 hours in an airport. I wasn't allowed into Japan, so I had to stay on the air side. So when I came back, I felt really disheartened. And I, by the way, airlines have apologized, travel agents have apologized, and um, and it wasn't my fault, but I didn't have the right visa documents, which had just recently changed because of COVID. So I decided that I needed to spend time in nature. And so I decided to go to my favorite place on North Stradbroke Island. Um, the, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of, um, Strad, of North Stradbroke Island. The traditional name is Minjiriba and the people who play a very important role to this day on um, Minjeriba, uh, the Kondamuka people. The walks that I like doing, Strabrook Island is very well known for its beaches. So if beaches, fishing, if you're into that, I love it because it provides a balance between this ocean and the mountain and the, and the trees. It's, it's, a large, it's, a large, it's a large island and it's got all these trails and walks that you can do um, on inland. Um, and you can see that from that photo, um, beautiful gum trees, beautiful eucalyptus trees, all these park trails that have been built are really forest breaks. They're there to protect, um, to, to protect um, parts of the island so, um, for forest uh, fire, for fire management purposes. They're all fire breaks. Um, play a very important role. So I went there and I was going to film, get some films there, but it just rained the whole time. But the place is so gorgeous, even when it is raining. But the elements of forest bathing were perfect. It was foggy. There was a lot of humidity. It wasn't too hot. So it, it was the freshness. And in certain parts, and I don't think I've got the photos, um, to show you could even this you could smell the phytocytes um, from the trees and um, and of course it, Australian forest bathing you're more than likely to meet a couple of the local um, inhabitants that's the King Stradbroke Island lots of kangaroos if you're lucky you'll find some koalas and there was a little kookaburra and this little kookaburra followed me. This walk that I love doing, and it's, it's, um, it can be challenging in times as a bit of a rocky area, but this, um, there's a rocky area. So it takes over an hour. So it can, by the end of it, it can be a bit exhausting, which is not necessarily important, you know, part of a Shinri Nyoko practice. But this little kookaburra actually followed me for about 15 minutes. It was interesting. And perhaps because my little beagle child uh, Lucy was with me. 
So these are some photos. These are some, you can see the, that some of these beautiful gum trees, they must be so old. And um, you don't want to go in there. The, the, there's a lot of ferns um, in there, bracken, they call, I think they call bracken. So there's a lot of ferns. It's really beautiful, beautiful countryside with some beautiful old trees. And fires regularly do come through there. So that's why they've got all these fire breaks to stop, you know, and to try to prevent the fires getting out of control in summer. Um, coming up close by, and of course, I can't help myself but touch the resin weeping out of the trees. Um, and it's there, and you can see there those little marks on that gum tree. That's actually from a little insect, but it's actually called a scribbly gum. It looks like somebody's actually drawn something on it, but no, that's a little insect that just borrows on the surface of the bark that causes all those little patterns there. Um, and you can see, obviously, there's been some damage and some resin has weeped out of these trees. So, yeah, it's my favorite place. And by spending three days here, I was able just to recollect my mind after having spent all this time in an airport waiting to get a connecting to get a flight back to Australia and feeling so upset that I couldn't do some forest bathing in Japan with the team at team in Japan. Now of course um, when you look down so you don't just look up at the trees, I love looking down. You're just surprised to see the different assortment of fungi that just seem to flourish. And of course, because it had been raining, the, the fungi were prolific throughout the island. And you'll probably notice where, if you, where you live whenever it rains that the fungi become so prolific. Now, I don't know my fungi that well, so I'm not willing to do any taste test. So just be very wary. Make sure you know your fungi just in case you're gonna do some taste testing. Now, I know one of the things that I love doing when I visit Japan, and you see moss growing everywhere. Moss is found in the temple gardens. Moss is found in the, in the forest when you go walking. Hey, but we've also got our moss here in Australia on Stradbroke Island. And this is where I'd like to finish off. And of course, I just love touching the texture of the moss on growing on the rocks here on the Jeriba. Um, this is the end of the presentation. I do hope that this has given you some wonderful insight and encourage you to spend some time outdoors in the forest, but just enjoying it, not actually doing any real physical activity. And I hope you do get to, um, hope you get a chance, opportunity to experience this beautiful collection of essential oils that I think have been specially crafted from these gorgeous trees um, in Japan. Um, they're very special trees, the sugi and the hinoki, um, and you will, it's a, they're a real treasure. Please make sure you get time to watch the other videos that you'll be sent links to. There'll be an interview with Higashi-san about the distillation. There is an interview with the forest rangers um, as well. So, and then there is a link to the actual um, blog that I've written, which has all the supporting notes for this presentation. I will be, please keep posted. If you have not subscribed to my emails or newsletters, please, you can do so by visiting my website, www.salvatorebattaglia.com.au. So please, you'll be kept up to date or, um, and I'll be posting um, what the next webinar will be next month very soon. Thank you so much for your time. Please take care. And I hope you get to experience some forest bathing at home and in nature. Thank you so much. <laughs>